Right, so there's the uh, mach machined up blank, which has come out quite well. And now obviously it needs to be faced off on this side and, and on this side. Um, this is a the small bush that is going to be a press fit in there. Um, that's already been drilled and tapped to take a grub screw. So that's what how I'll attach it to the shaft. But the next job really is to um, drill some lightning holes in this because this is uh, this is a lot lighter already than the cast iron flywheel that was on the electromagnetic engine. But it's still too heavy for my, my liking. It needs to be lightened up a little bit further. So that's the next job. Drill the lightning holes. Well, <laughs> I'm going to start on the lightning holes. <clears throat> Basically, what I did was I started off with two of the original drill holes. And I simply <clears throat> marked at right angles another two holes equidistant from the centre. Now, because I knew I was going to open them up, the original two holes I wasn't using, you can see one there, they, uh, they would be taken out once the holes were uh, enlarged. So basically what I did was I started off by drilling them out successively larger until we got to about 14 or 15 mil on the drill press. Then I mounted on them on an angle plate on the lathe and used a one inch end mill to bore them out to the finished size, which is this. Whether or not I put more holes in, I don't know. I'm going to weigh the thing when I've finished it, finished making the holes anyway, to see what kind of weight we've got. But uh, I'll show you the setup I have on the lathe to bore the holes out using the end mill. Okay, so this is the setup we got on the lathe. <clears throat> we have a one inch end mill, and I call it. Now, this is a pretty heavy tool for this little lathe. So, you know, you really have to feed this nice and slowly because you don't want to put too much load on this thing. It's not really designed for this kind of kind of work, but it but it does work. We have an angle plate bolted to the tool post here, and the work is bolted onto the angle plate. Now, the piece of three mil plywood behind the work is just so that I can go all the way through with the hole and it won't be, I won't be cutting into the angle plate. To line the cutter up with the hole that's already there, before putting the cutter in, I put the original drill bit that I used to drill that hole in another collet, and then I line the plate up so that the drill bit slides in and out of the hole that's already there. That centers the hole up with, with the drill bit. We'll give it a quick uh, squirt with Rocket 40. Using the standard equation, four times the cutting speed in sheet surface feet per minute over the tool diameter for milling, which is exactly what we're doing here. So that's the surface feet per minute for aluminium is 250. So that's four times that's a thousand over the tool diameter in inches, which is one. So we want this thing to be running at about a thousand RPM, which is what we will be running it at. And as I said, nice light cuts and you will get some chatter that's inevitable in this in this setup. It's just not rigid enough. Nice gentle feed. I have got my DRO on so I can see exactly how far I'm going that way. Change the camera angle so you can actually see what we've we've managed to achieve so far. There you go. As you can see, the uh, air mill makes quite short work of the uh, aluminium plate, and we'll cut through it quite nicely. Again, I, like I said, you've got to take it feed rate wise. You've got to take it nice and steady because this is quite a load for this this little tiny lathe. Okay, let's do a bit more cutting.
So as you can see, we're in about six mil now and it doesn't really take long to do this. So uh, I'll get on and finish this one and do the other one and then we'll uh, have a look at it once it's done. Well, I've got the holes all drilled. Now there's still quite a lot of meat left on the flywheel. So I'm probably gonna drill more holes in it because I wanna get this nice and light. And, it, and at the moment it's, it, it is actually still reasonably heavy. Uh, the boss has been pressed in place. So I think the next thing will be just some conventional machining to relieve the faces a little bit uh, and clean them up. So that's the, that's the next stage. And then I'm gonna consider putting more holes in it. Okay, the flywheel is now finished. As you can see, I did decide to drill some extra holes in it. After I machined, it relieved the faces on, on both sides. I was still not happy with the weight, so I basically put some more holes equidistant between the larger holes. It is actually uh, now quite white, light, now quite light. So what we will do is, in a minute, we'll weigh this and compare it to the uh, cast iron flywheel that I was using. Now, as a, as a note to myself, <laughs> next time I make one of these, and I almost certainly will make a, more flywheels, make sure that the boss comes through both sides <laughs> because obviously if you don't, you've got nothing to hold it. If you want to machine off this face, you've got nothing to hold it on, on this side. So basically what I had to do was make up another a boss like that and I basically clamped that using a stud onto the flywheel so that I was able to then mount that in a collet so that I could machine that side. But uh, yeah, yeah it's, uh, live and learn, live and learn. Right, let's, let's weigh it up and we'll compare it to the cast iron one okay so here's my really cheap and crappy kitchen scales i really must get myself some electronic scales so i'll put the cast iron one on to start with and let's have a look at that what's that telling us Hundred and eighty grams yeah so 180 grams for the cast iron flywheel all right okay now, hopefully we should see a significant difference with the aluminium one. Oh yes, definitely. So that's steady down a bit. Seventy, excellent. So that's a massive weight saving over over the original flywheel that I was using. So yeah, there we are. Right. So that needs to be fitted onto the electromagnet engine and we will be done. So hopefully it will run. Anyway, that's it for making the uh, flywheel for the electromagnet engine. I hope you enjoyed this little video. Thank you very much for watching. Cheers.